What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Real Estate Agent Rehab. My name is Amir al and this is... And my name is Vance Mizzy. Welcome to episode 17. 17, all right. We're getting we up go. there. So uh, today, we're going to talk about navigating the modern real estate landscape. So what does that mean? A lot of big words there, a lot of stuff going on, because there's so much going on in today's real estate market. Things are changing. It almost seems like things daily. are changing like daily, if, if. Uh, depending on what, what part of the real estate industry you're looking at. There's always a lot that's going on. So, I mean, I, the first thing, the biggest thing that everybody's talking about right now is what's going on with all of these big lawsuits mm. that are happening. Because we have a lot of agents uh, at our brokerage that are you know very concerned. Um, we're in California, if you, don't, you didn't realize that, and a lot of these lawsuits are happening. Uh, these lawsuits are happening out of state. One that's just actually um, went in favor of the uh, plaintiffs and were awarded $1.8 billion uh, to all the sellers in the state. Which state was that again? Oh, my gosh. No. Minnesota. So it's one of the Midwestern one of states. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll uh, get that information you know, later un- to un- you. But. Unfortunately, what's happening, though, right now is we're being told one thing. And mm. actions are taking other other areas, and the end result is right now it's really business as usual mm-hmm. for us. Right? Mm-hmm. I know other states are, are making other changes and things. It's not like we shouldn't be worried about it, but really, what you and I were talking about before we even started is really what we need to do is is level up our educations. Mm-hmm. Right? We need to kind of start really bringing in the professionalism into the real estate industry. If you're not designated as a realtor or with your ABR, your SRS, negotiation experts. Mm. These are the things that are gonna put us in a position that when this lawsuit comes down and starts making its way, we know how to handle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you get, you're getting yourself trained in certifications, you're gonna put yourself at a higher level than the average mm-hmm. realtor. So right. the more you know, the, the, the better you can market yourself to people. And if there were any changes, if for whatever reason they got rid of buyer's agents, was I, I find it hard to believe that they would, but if they would, if they did, then you would wanna have all these designations. You wanna have mm-hmm. you know, as much experience behind you uh, to be able to promote yourself as a buyer's agent. Um, as opposed to you know maybe watching buyers going directly to listing agents to purchase their properties, um, so yeah, it could, there could be a lot of changes. But you know from what we're seeing, especially in the state of California, I mean we have a very clear listing agreement, yes. and so it's very, very much states how much the total commission is, how much the buyer's agent commission is. So uh, sellers are, are definitely should be very aware. Uh, of what they're getting themselves into when they're when we're listing their properties and you know if if you have additional concerns as an agent too you could take it a step further if you're a buyer's agent do a buyer broker agreement right mm-hmm. and definitely protect your your yeah, income. highly recommended putting those in place these days now it's it's really becoming something that people are going to become a lot more in tune with signing mm-hmm. because they're going to be hiring you as an agent, and that might be the change that we see where mm-hmm. people actually get hired on, and it's it's more of a um, an automatic. Mm-hmm. That you're hiring a real estate agent to find you a house, just like you hire a real estate agent to sell your house. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to the change. I think it, it it's going to create some uh, some growing pains for us, but in the end, it's probably going to benefit the industry. You know, most of the changes that we've had over the past 20 years that I've been around. I've seen really improve. I mean, right down from, you know, the, the biggest one was going paperless. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Everybody thought that was going to be the end of the industry. You know? Oh, yeah. No, no, that's a, that's a great but thing for everybody. Now you show up with paper and people don't know what to do with it. You exactly. Know, so it's so we have we got that going on, and then we've got what well, we have interest rates interest that rate. kind of got up to a two decade high, mm-hmm. right? Um, up around eight percent, and then now they're starting to come down a little bit, which is good. So we see there's some light at the end mm-hmm. of the tunnel in regards to rates. So we're seeing rates now, you know, around seven, you know, get down into the mid sixes depending on the programs that you're looking at. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel there, but there's definitely the adjustments with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and facts are fact, we're coming into an election year. Yeah, so that so, could be beneficial or it could be detrimental to our industry depending on which way it goes, mm-hmm. depending on which party prevails. So, um, you know, that could definitely uh, affect us. And then, 
you have the inventory situation, right? Yeah. Where we have low inventory, mm -hmm. uh, all time low inventory amounts. Mm -hmm. I mean, from from within the last decade, and you know, with the high rates, so it's kind of really a funky time just to even be able to sell real estate because you have these sellers now that don't necessarily want to sell because they may be uh they may have refinanced when interest rates were two and three percent right so they're kind of like stalemating so to speak and so we're just sitting there trying to get these guys to go um and the only reason that they're going is for you know if they're getting divorced or if they're the somebody somebody has so died what is what is this statistic i think it was like 75 percent of the people right now who own homes own homes with under three percent mortgages mm-hmm and yeah, some, it, it's tremendously high, and like not to mention the equity. Everybody's right. in an equity position because the prices are up there, mm -hmm. and you know they refinanced or whatever the case may be. Got these low rates, and there's so much equity and a lot of cash uh, in the marketplace. So that doesn't mean that anybody's in a really stressful situation to sell, right. um, like we were in the last real estate crash. Yeah, you know, uh, we we talk a lot of, a, a lot about it in our brokerage is finding have to sells. Okay, the people who have to sell. Okay, they're moving. You know, why are they moving? You know, job change, what we were saying, you know, divorce. Relocation. Diapers, death. relocation. There's a million what reasons somebody will have to sell their home. And there's only a few reasons why somebody wants to sell their home. Mm -hmm. They want a bigger house. They want to do something. But th there's opportunities there if you're looking for them. And you're talking to people and finding the motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. And from that, you can really help help them go where they need to be um you know buying in a high interest rate market is not the worst thing either okay. no it's not and i think it's a it's a good way to go because you know if you're buying in a higher interest rate when the interest rates go down you can refinance and when the rates go down then Equity usually prices up. go up right so it's definitely a good time to buy and because the prices are high it's definitely a good time to sell but oddly enough in some marketplaces that we're finding especially i think in the luxury marketplace and i'm talking anywhere i mean two and a half to three million and up for la county because that's mm -hmm. where we sell uh we're finding listings that are starting to sit on the market uh so people are a little bit being a little bit more selective on where you know how much they're spending on properties yeah. and um you know they're they're being very uh, conservative in what they're buying too. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to overspend because they, they believe there's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace as well, yeah. right? Well, a lot of, you know, when you get into the multi-million dollar homes, you're usually dealing with people with multiple homes. Right. And, you know, maybe right now, I don't need three houses mm -hmm. at 8%, you know? <laughs> I'll stay with two and I'll wait for the third house. Mm -hmm. But those houses, I may run into situations I have to sell them. Mm -hmm. So that's where we need to uh, be in touch with our clients and reaching out. Right now, the most important thing you can do as a real estate agent is reach out to your past clients. Mm -hmm. Let them know you're there because people have questions. They got questions about what's going on in the business, in the industry, interest rates. And if you're not answering them, they're asking someone else. Mm -hmm. And that becomes their expert. That becomes their go-to. And when they're ready to do something, that's who they're going to be working with. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as picking up the phone today and saying, hey, how you been? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, any questions, any issues going through your mind on real estate? Because mm -hmm. a lot of them are thinking right now, like, OK, what, what, what what's going to happen? Right. Mm -hmm. Is You know, is there anything that's going to happen? Am I going to you know, lose a bunch of equity in my home? Should I sell my home? Should I downsize? What should I do? And um, being informed and being able to have those conversations with your clients and being the expert experts going to be very important, uh, especially if you're new and you're just starting out in real estate. You want to be able to get as much information as possible mm -hmm. so you can um, know what you're talking about, even though you may not have enough experience yeah. right now. And, you know, being able to adapt to these situations in the market is going to be is is very important because you know as we mentioned you know this market is shifting i mean almost daily in a sense with mm -hmm. new information that's coming out so being ahead of that or being uh, you know understanding what's going on so you can adapt what you're doing um is definitely going to be important and um you know there, luckily we have technology now yeah well that was going to bring that was bringing me to my next point with how do we adapt today mm-hmm I mean, there's there, there's a different ways. I mean, like, 
there, there's so many there, there's so much information going on like just right on your phone through social media mm-hmm. the news podcasts i mean wherever you can get YouTube. information everything youtube's right. a big thing go on youtube and type in whatever you want to learn about real estate mm-hmm. okay what and and there's going to be somebody coming up giving you information is it right we don't know okay you want to watch a couple different videos and figure out where you where you mm-hmm. find your 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 kind of midpoint where you're happy with what you're hearing but most importantly follow the trends okay what what's going on right now everybody is searching on youtube mm-hmm. are we making youtube videos are we sending our clients are are our clients able to find us where they're looking mm-hmm. are we are we creating content where people can look like we're creating content right now where people can look uh, look us up and mm-hmm. search for us whether they're clients or agents whatever it may be so being where people are looking is going to be very important even though you know i mean there's still the old school ways of doing business and door knocking you know doing cold calls sending out mailers and stuff like that that's all important too that that but hasn't gone away no it doesn't and i think <laughs> a lot of people are trying on, to right? trying to make that go away i don't right. think it'll ever go away and mm-hmm. i think that's the best way to connect with somebody is just get in front of them but once you get in front of them if you don't have the online presence and you don't have the technology mm-hmm. behind you um, then you won't look like a like a professional in this day and age. And the ones that will get the business are the ones that do have the online presence and do have the reviews and do have yeah. the, the platform set up and, and social media. You know, the, it, there's something we said for the fundamentals, uh, like like you were saying, because uh, I was listening to a, a another podcast the other day from a different coach, and he was talking about if you needed a listing by the end of the month. What are the two things you would do? And what's the one thing you'd stop doing? Mm. Okay. And what they were doing, they were, yeah, right? And they were going through this thing. And oh, that's good. What the, the basic answer came down to was I would stop doing social media and I would door knock and phone call because that is immediate result. Mm-hmm. Okay. That said, that's immediate result. The social media is the long-term result. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the advertising. That's the marketing. You have to do both, but mm-hmm. you have to understand they're both going to feed you at different times. Mm-hmm. But if you need to make something happen right now, going on social media and saying I'm a realtor probably isn't going to work. Absolutely, and that's where I think a lot of people miss the boat because they don't like to do the stuff that makes them uncomfortable. That's right. You don't like to go in and uh, have tough conversations mm-hmm. or get in front of somebody and or get the rejection. Right, because a lot of people don't know what to say. They don't practice, you know, what their uh, their scripts. Yeah. Right. How comfortable are you out in Zoom land mm-hmm. um, with texting? Mm-hmm. Because I sit with agents all the time, and I say, you know, call this guy. Let's talk to him. Mm-hmm. And they fire off some happy thumbs, and all of a sudden, they're like, oh, I sent him a text. Mm-hmm. That's oh, the make, uh, I cringe when I <laughs> like, no. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> we have no control because, uh, you know, you could say anything in text and people can easily just tell you no. Mm-hmm. And how do you have a conversation to, to rebuttal that or go overcome an objection? How do you, you don't hear their tone and, and you know, and you can't there, sense there's, what's going on. There's something to be said for the way you speak, mm-hmm. what you say, how you say it, mm-hmm. you know, typing it out and just sending it in, you know, in a text is easy. Mm-hmm. But it is not the way. It's not. It's not effective communication. Mm-hmm. It's communication. It's not very personal, and that's that's one of the forms of technology that I think is hurting us in this yeah. day and age. And it hurt, hurts a lot of salespeople right now is texting because oh, I just send them an email. We'll see what happens. I mean, that's a very passive way. Yeah. You want to get in front of that person. Well, you want to set up a meeting. Here's an right? example. Sure. Uh, you receive an e- you receive an offer, mm-hmm. full price offer. You never spoke to the agent. Mm-hmm. They email it to you in the middle of the night, all cash, 10 days, full price. Is it real? I mean, if it's in writing and it's signed, it is real, but I'm still going to want to have a conversation. You You know, I'm I'm feeling okay about it, but it should be followed up with a call. Now, you know, change this. Agent calls you and says, hey, Amir, I'm putting an offer together. What do you want it to look like? Who's your title? Who's your escrow? What, how do you want this thing to write? Mm. I'm going to write you full price. I got all cash, and we're going to close it in 10 days. I'll send it over tonight. Probably get you to get there about 1130. You'll, you'll see it first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. 
you're now going to think about this guy and think, that's a professional. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just because they called you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it does make a big difference to have that connection for sure. Yeah. And, and folks, you'll get more information from somebody by speaking to them than by texting them the same mm -hmm. information. You ask, you know, if you ask me, do you have any offers? What am I going to say? Yes, no. Mm -hmm. Right? Now what? Now you're going to text me again. Mm -hmm. If you say, if you call me and you say, hey, do you have any offers? What's going on? How do we work this out? Now you're the one who's communicating. Mm -hmm. And you're the one who's actually probably going to get the deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you'll be selling yourself and... You know, we can, you can build a connection. You can build that rapport with somebody. Right. And it'll be much easier to want to be able to work with somebody that you feel comfortable with, right? Exactly. Than somebody with, with no emotion, no attachment. So, so I don't want to work with somebody who only wants to talk to me through text and email. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So where where customers or where, where are buyers and sellers going right now when they're looking for houses? You know, and I still they, they're still looking, I think, in the same place that they have yeah. been for the last five years or so. Yep. And they're still going on Zillow, Redfin. They're going on to Google. They're doing searches mm -hmm. there. Um, I think, you know, people, the clients want it, make it easy. And I think that's just the easy way for people to search for things now. Yeah. Well, Zillow became Xerox. Mm-hmm. Right. Remember when photocopiers were, you know, you, we used to make Xeroxes. Yeah. Right. For a minute, you know, and it was like photocopy just went out the window and Zillow, people were like, oh, I'll just check Zillow. Mm -hmm. Like they're not, they're, they're just seeing it as like a, a search platform. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind it, it works out really well in that capacity. But as agents, you need to know anytime your client is on a platform like that, they are being proselytized to use other agents. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to be aware of where your clients are searching. And maybe even discuss that with them, mm -hmm. you know, and tell them, look, you're going to get advertisements. You're going to get hit up on these things if your company doesn't have, you know, its own search app or something to that effect. But you want to set the stage for people so they understand what they're going to be dealing with as opposed to them finding out and then you trying to kind of talk it away. Another important reason to use the buyer broker agreement. Exactly. If you're working with a buyer, to look on there. And a lot of times the information on there isn't totally accurate, especially yeah. when coming up with values for properties. And we can talk all about that as far as Zillow goes. But people are still looking at that. So keeping your customer informed and staying in front of them um, you know, as much as possible. If you think, for whatever reason, if your client's looking for a property and you haven't talked to them for a week, um, that could be a problem. Yeah. Right, because they could already be talking to somebody else, and if you don't have that buyer broker agreement, or you know, if you don't have that strong connection or that bond, you might just get ghosted. And mm -hmm. we were talking to, in our meeting the other day, and a lot of agents were, were you know asking like, how do I deal with not being ghosted by buyers? And it's like, well, maybe you're not communicating with them enough. Yeah. Maybe you're not saying their expectation enough. Now, maybe you're not providing them with good information to where they want to. Mm -hmm. exchange with you and stay working with you you know and so let that be your report card yeah that's one of the things that you know we wrote down was it, the importance of staying updated on the market trends mm -hmm. just you know all right i'm calling a buyer mm -hmm. right there's only so many times I'm, I'm, i can call them and say do you like the house i said right right you got to discuss what's going on in the market mm -hmm. and let them know and make them in the know of what's happening that man maybe i should make an offer on this place because prices are starting to trend up Mm -hmm. Right. If I don't get this thing now, I'm going to pay more for it next week. Mm -hmm. Right. And you start talking to people about that. Like, hey, you know what? You know, interest rates just hit a, a half point low today from, you know, a month ago. This is something that the buyer should be aware of. And all of a sudden that might re-energize them to say, you know what? Let's get in before January 1. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the little things that you're giving people to give uh, to create action as opposed to telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. Or just being, you know, more of a the, like kind of a servient behavior in a sense of just waiting, like, are you ready to buy? Are you ready to buy? You know, mm -hmm. um, come being the professional, having the information, being able to relay that information so they want to engage with you um, is going to be very important. Absolutely. Um, what else we got here? We're going to talk about online presence, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a big thing. You know, yeah, as we is. mentioned earlier, we're talking about online presence. We're talking about doing the door knocking, mm -hmm. you know, doing, making phone calls. And again, it comes back to your online presence. If your online presence is there, there's a, there's certain different ways to build online presence, obviously through social media platforms, making sure you have business pages, 
uh, or even if you have a personal page, making it, you know, putting your professional headshot, good photos, uh, maybe information about real estate videos is really big mm-hmm. right now. Uh, we talked about that in our sales meeting, doing videos on uh, how to do like tips and tricks in real mm-hmm. estate, property tours, different things uh, related to neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is your reviews, right? I think yes. that's an easy one to get done that we miss quite often is re- your real estate reviews. Because even if you're new, um, you know, you can start working with your friends and family and they'll mm-hmm. usually be more than happy to give you some sort of review and just make sure they're, they're doing it on all platforms. Yeah. Right? And nothing wrong. Like I'm going out tonight to uh, give keys to a client, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to hand them the keys and I'm also going to ask them to shoot me a video. Oh, okay. Like, you know, I'm going to start doing 30 second videos. Like just, Standing next to him. So, how was your experience? Do thirty seconds. They're going to be uncomfortable. I need ten seconds mm-hmm. of them saying something nice about me that I can mm-hmm. use, that I can cut down, and I can quote. Mm-hmm. And we can just continue to use those right mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And think about this: what if you got like fifteen or twenty of these? Mm-hmm. You had them all lined up, and people were just talking about what a great agent you were. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you handed somebody said, "Well, why would I hire you to sell my house?" You go, oh, "Let me play this reel for you." Mm-hmm. And it's a sizzle reel, two minutes long of every you know half a dozen clients t- mm-hmm. t- talking about how great you are mm-hmm. and how happy they are. Or for your it. your if you haven't created your own website, maybe you want to create your own website and have your a section just for customer tutorials Absolutely. and see these are some of the clients that I've worked with in the past. These are some videos mm-hmm. to talk about their experience and. People be able to go on there and and watch them, you know. So you, there's different ways. A, a lot of the stuff that you know, that you do do for your online presence can carry out through different platforms, mm-hmm. and you can reuse it uh, and utilize it for different yeah. things. Yeah, it just builds out your SEO, and all of a sudden people start googling you. And if they're googling you, and videos of your clients are coming up talking mm-hmm. about how wonderful you are, mm-hmm. that's what I want. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's definitely that's something. My goal. All right, that's what I'm starting to build out my, my video for, for that reason. I mean, this stuff is at our fingertips. And if we don't do it, someone else will. And you'll, you'll, you'll definitely sh- kind of feel really bad if you don't get it, especially mm-hmm. if you just sell a house and you know the client's happy and you're just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I got my commission check and you're so focused on what you're going to do with your commission. And maybe you miss getting that testimonial. Maybe mm-hmm. you miss getting that review. Or maybe you thought about it and it's like a month later and you're like, uh, it's been a month. Mm-hmm. But you know what? It's never too late to go back. You can always call them and just check on them and see how things are going. Uh, as you should be. You should be yeah. following up with your clients. And then once they get their new home, you don't want them to think, oh, yeah, you just made your commission and you don't care about them anymore. Keep that bond. Keep that connection because they will be that repeat and referral mm-hmm. commercial for you if you stay connected to them and make sure that they're good in their home they're going to tell their friends and family and how wonderful that you are, but that's an opportunity for you to go back and then re-engage them for that um, review or for that yeah. testimonial. I mean, as Back to your first client you ever sold, mm-hmm. maybe five years, 10 years, 20 years ago. Imagine calling that person up, re-engaging with them and saying, hey, you know what? I'm making videos for the, you know, can I come out and just do a quick 30 second testimonial? Mm-hmm. Right. This is my first client. We met mm-hmm. 20 years ago. She's still happy with my services. Mm-hmm. Boom. She talks. That's a great video. Mm-hmm. Right. She's going to be excited or the client's going to be excited. You put it on their social media. Mm-hmm. Now you're spreading the, the word. You're spreading love. And it's really creating, uh, what's the word, uh, organic growth. Mm-hmm. Because now people are sharing it within themselves. And now they're happy to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it's all about the client, you know, yeah. and if you make it all about them, then good things will happen. And if you if you haven't set up your online presence and your social media channels, the first basic thing to do really is get good uh, media, get a good headshot, get some mm-hmm. good videos, get some um, good graphics done um, and make sure you know, you get that out there first, yep. right? And I think a lot, this is where a lot of realtors, we, we've had a lot of realtors uh, in this because I would even say, so I have a brokerage with about like 500 realtors, right? And I would say maybe 50% of them have a headshot and that maybe- That is really generous. Right, okay, <laughs> okay, maybe it's 
Is it? Is it? Is it? I mean, Shane might know, know better than me, but maybe it's sixty percent. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Now we so, offer a free headshot. Yeah, we offer free headshots, <laughs> and 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 oddly enough, you have a lot of people that don't have it, right? And then you have the people that do have it may have one from a long time ago mm-hmm. where it doesn't look like them, doesn't really represent them, um, and they want to keep this old one because they don't like the way they look now. And I, this is this is what baffles me about mm-hmm. this because you don't go to the DMV and go, no, I don't want to do a picture, right? No, you have to take your mm-hmm. get your driver's license, right. and with your business card as a realtor, that's like your ID, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you show you come to a house, you throw out throw down your business card, it has your picture on there. It's part of your marketing. It's part of your branding. You guys are building a brand, and if you're not setting it up with the right pictures with the right graphics the right you know the the, the right themes in a sense you're really missing the boat totally right? that's Absolutely. the most basic thing that you mm-hmm. can do and uh people like it whenever i post a headshot or you know mm-hmm. a new marketing piece people like it on social media they share they comment they you know they have their their opinions about it i mean i have some opinions about my new headshot i got the, at the last sales meeting but it gets people talking Mm-hmm. Right, and it's just one simple way to drop some something in your on your platforms and get people talking and thinking about you and what you do because they're gonna say, "Wow, you look so nice, you yeah. look so good." And if, right? and if you're setting up that headshot and you know your your profiles, write yourself a bio, long form, maybe one or two paragraphs that you can copy and paste pieces mm-hmm. from that bio into each of your social media platforms. Mm-hmm. Okay, in the end, you're gonna have the bio on your on your website. But then there's going to be pieces of it on each web on each social media site that when somebody reads it, they're reading pieces of it, and then when they go to their website, they go, "Wow, this sounds just like the same guy that I've been working with." As mm-hmm. opposed to what we normally do is create a social media site mm-hmm. and we write a quick bio right there, mm-hmm. and then we write another bio somewhere else and somewhere else, and then they're all disjointed and nothing sounds or looks the same, right? Coca-Cola, everything looks sounds and tastes the same mm-hmm. right it's a brand okay it's a logo people are buying the logo they're buying the brand they know what they're getting when they gra- grab that can of red coat of red soda right mm-hmm. what are they getting when they grab you right and that's what your social media is going to be telling them that's mm-hmm. what your, your bios are telling them that's what all the photos and your posts are telling them then they actually see what you're doing in real life mm-hmm. exactly and so now let's, let's talk about, so what, what about technologies for listings or for properties? Like what are, what are people doing right now? And, I, and I, some of the stuff that's going on right now is still like, I don't know, it's still, still beyond me. Yeah. I can't, like I, I still haven't wrapped my head around AI and what people are doing like with writing property descriptions and I don't know, with the different marketing tools. Even with some people's headshots, like if you look at some of the people's headshots online right now, they're like yeah. totally uh, AI. <laughs> yeah, I like download this app that said I can create your headshot. Yeah. So, yeah, what 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 are we doing now? Um, let's talk about AI for a minute, just because you know I brought that up. So, what are people doing right now in real estate with AI? And you probably know more because yeah. you, you've taken uh, some classes on this. Uh, something I started messing with, and I and I still haven't gotten it right is doing AI photos. We're doing A and Bs. So taking, like right now I have a fixer, uh, and my idea that I've been working with with our, social, with our media guy is take a picture of the front of the house and then AI it into what it could be. Like renderings of like... Yeah, like different renderings of how things look, you know, add a pool, take out, you know, it, is it gonna be a, an infinity pool, things like that. And, so I'm looking for the site that will work for me. Like I'm getting. So there's different with, sites set up. Oh already, my god, yeah. there's a million. You can just type oh, in wow. Google search. Okay. AI sites. For you kind of get in trouble with photos. that because like if you're not you know representing the house and it's, well no 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 you have to represent it properly so you yeah. have to show the before and say this is a before photo and this is an AI generated photo of what it could be. Okay. Like you've got to, you know, if you're just send, putting up AI generated photos and like pulling couches and painting walls and stuff like that, you're getting yourself in trouble. So you got to be careful yeah. with that. Very, very careful. The other thing big that people are using is the property descriptions. Yeah. Okay. That one I kind of like because I, I, it's I, really cool. I right? always cringe. It's the last thing that I do when I put a listing up is put up uh, so the description. I, I just learned this the other day. You can actually put the address in. 
Mm. Okay, so I can write in, please create a property description for 232 Avenue A in Redondo Beach. Okay, uh, highlight bedrooms, gourmet kitchen, and rooftop deck. Enter. It goes in and finds 232 Avenue A in mm. the, on the internet, finds out what it looks like, where it is, okay, ha, you know, beds, baths, the whole thing, and writes the description against it. Wow. And now you can go back in and doctor it into saying, write it with a southern tinge, mm -hmm. right? I was joking around the other day, I wrote, write it like a pirate. And everything was all in pirate talk. Like you can get it to do anything you want, mm -hmm. right? And but now you can also say more professional, make it more playful, make it more beach oriented, mm -hmm. and it will actually doctor the the piece to whatever you want it to sound like. Wow! Um, I highly recommend using that as a base, not the end tool. So, so what what are these sites like? So let's let's let everybody know like where can you get this uh, done at? Uh, the one that I use for all of my you know the the actual AI stuff the writing is uh, that chat what is it? chat GPT chat GPT yeah okay and there's two versions so the first version that's free only goes up to 2020. So what do you mean like all of the data yes, like all the it only scrapes data to 2020. Okay, and how much does it cost to get a system like this? Uh, the paid version, I think I'm paying 20 bucks a month. Okay. And that is up-to-date data from today. Okay. okay. So now, where, where does that matter? If I'm, I can go into you know, a free version of AI and write, write me a 400-word paragraph, you know, uh, report on interest rates today. It's going to talk about interest rates from 2020. Mm-hmm. All right, and that's now you want the real you have to be paying and then you say write this and it's going to talk about interest rates today and you're going to get two very very dynamically different articles interesting so you got to be real careful with what you're using and putting it out there as the gospel and facts of fact you need to make sure what you're putting out there is proper information it's not got it not do all end all so that's shit, chat GBT. Yeah. Okay. The the photo one is I'm still uh, Google searching photo AI, and I'm okay. just trying different sites and seeing which one. Maybe we could talk about that one me. next time. Yeah. Um, I think you know with with listings too, all the same stuff applies. I think still with professional photography, videography, three D tours, uh, but home tours now are a big thing, especially if you want to grow your online presence. Is doing some sort of video walkthrough. Um, again, we were talking about this in our in our meeting the other day. Um, some people don't like to be in front of the camera, and that's okay. But doing a voiceover, talking about the property, um, giving the people the information mm -hmm. uh, is important. You just walking through a property with no voice or no human behind it, it's kind of boring. People don't necessarily want to see that. But um, if you are doing video tours, and walkthroughs, I think, on obviously on your listing, go to your brokerage's listings, hit all of them up, all the listing agents, go through it, no matter what it is. I know some people may think, oh, I really don't have the nicest listing to do. It's okay. Not everybody's going to have a super nice listing, but at least you have something. There's going to be an audience for that. There's mm -hmm. going to be a segment of buyers for that. And uh, it's, it's worth doing it, I think, on every one that you can. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, on those videos, you always want to add the subtitles because basically nobody's watching video with volume on. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to watch it. They want to be able to read it. Mm -hmm. And they want to be able to engage if mm -hmm. they're interested. Exactly. So so with that, too. And then um, don't forget about doing lives. It's okay if you're doing an open house or maybe a broker's open. There's a lot of people there. Yeah. Throw it on your social media platform on a live where people can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're talking, hey, we're having an open house at 123 ABC Street. Make sure you come down, check it out. You know, this yep. is what the view looks like. This is what the living room looks like. Check out all the people that are here. It's creating a buzz. You look like a professional. And people are nosy. 
That's right. Right? <laughs> People on your platform are nosy. They want to see what you're doing. And if you're on live, then they, they're mm-hmm. going to jump on there and definitely see what's happening. Understand, for every like you get, you've probably got four or five views. No. At I, least. That for sure. That are not responding to. Definitely. So with that, basically, what does the modern real estate landscape look like? It's changing. Mm-hmm. All right? And it's changing, but it's staying the same. Okay? And, and it's it's one of the very few industries that's doing that. Mm-hmm. Most move into different ways of doing business, and we're still... You know, nothing's getting away from the fundamentals of real estate right now. Mm-hmm. And only now are we just embracing all these new tools that is making our lives a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot in, a lot more inexpensive to run a real estate business today than it was 10 years ago. Absolutely. So if you embrace those ideas and take some money that you would have put into normal advertising and start doing it into your social media marketing and really building your presence probably going to see a tremendous change in your business absolutely and staying in tune with what's going on in the news in the marketplace uh in your local markets um, obviously following what's going on with these lawsuits mm-hmm. because you obviously want to be informed and you want to be trained and if if things go bad for us in a sense you want to be on you want to know when <laughs> you want you want to know what to do and when mm-hmm. and get the advice there's a lot a lot, a lot of uh, free classes through NAR and through your local boards that are mm-hmm. that are out there so definitely stay in tune with that and and stay positive and I tell my agents right now you know make your money now while you can stay positive get out there you're your own worst enemy so just uh, you know keep working keep your head mm-hmm. in it and if something changes, then we'll, we'll deal with it. But right now, just uh, sell real estate, have fun, and make some money. How hard would it be to be the happiest person in the room? Mm-hmm. Bring that to the next meeting you go to. There you go. We'll, we'll close on that. And thank you guys for watching again. Please like and subscribe. Uh, again, this is Amir al Kayat. I'm a broker owner for West Shores Realty. And Vance Mizzy, vice president. And we are just trying. We are two agents making our way in this business, folks, sharing what we're dealing with every day in running brokerages and running our own businesses. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.